Hello everyone, this is James Shore with another Test Driven Development video. It is still February the 23rd for me and I'm picking up where I left off. I just finished getting rid of the Double of Death, which probably needs a better name. Um, actually, you know what, this is a case where I think of a comment is needed. So let's see, we should say something along the lines of This test uh, handles a special case where the core Java library hangs when parsing a magic number. Um, yeah, that's good enough. By the way, thank you to Llewellyn Falco who taught me how to make the uh, source code reformat on the save. That was that was pretty nice. Um, okay, so next what I'd like to do is get those icons in. I want this to be a, um, you know, some sort of icon showing a failure rather than just dollar question, question, question. And to do that, well, there's two things I need to do. First, I need to figure out how to display a custom value like that inside of a table because I have no idea how to do that. And second, um, I need to make dollars do that. And I think the second part is easier. We'll just I imagine you need you have to operate on some sort of uh, component to do that. So we'll just make a uh, an equivalent to two string that dollars will own that will pass in that value or pass in that component. Uh, some people will probably not like that because it feels like it's uh, overlapping the responsibilities of the domain layer and the UI layer. I used to feel that way too, but I think the design is overall more clean when you do it that way. But uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes. So I'm going to go do a spike on this um, and get back to you. It'll probably I've never done this before, so it'll take me a little research. So I will see you in a few minutes.
come back. So I've finished doing my spike. Um, it looks like I've got this all working. I'll just show you really quick. Um, I've got it set up so that I'm creating a custom uh, cell renderer uh, which looks at the value of the dollars in this spike table, renders it in red and as a less than sign in one case, as a star in another case, and then as a greater sign in the third case, and um, gives it an appropriate tooltip. So that's looking pretty good. Um, So now I just need to bring this into the production code, and um, let's see the way. Let, before I start that, let me just clean up some of this stuff. So I think I've got that taken out. Uh, application frame, starting balance field. Yeah, there's no more exception handling in there. Good. So now we're on. Um, Oh, and I think we're formatting the dollars text field when it loses focus. Yeah, we're definitely doing that. Um, let me just double check that real quick. Yep, we've got some, we have some tests. Uh, yep, that's all good, so we can take that. Uh, but we do want to form or render negatives as red. So we'll take that negative dollars as red in the table and also in the text field. This is still to be done. Uh, that's, yeah. So, and we'll come back to all the rest of this later. Okay, so. What we need to do now is get that. Uh, we need these guys to be doing something. And I think what I'm going to do is start out just by having them render uh, simply. Now, the way I'm going to do this, I, I know that some of you are not going to like the way I plan on doing this. What I'm planning to do is I'm planning to add a render method to dollars and its subclasses. And um, yeah, so let's go ahead and do that. Um, I, now, the reason that some of you are probably not going to like this is because it feels like I'm mixing layers. My domain layer shouldn't be aware of my UI layer. And technically, it's not. What I'm doing is follow the tell, don't ask idea here, which is that you shouldn't be pulling data out of a, um, of a class. You should just be giving information to a class or an object and letting it make its own decisions. Now it's true that I'm, I'm mixing layers in that I've got now the domain layers depending on UI components, but it is not actually depending on the UI layer. Um, also, I care a lot less about this than I used to. <laughs> I care a lot less about uh, domain layer not depending on the UI layer. What really matters is just the overall cleanliness of the design. Now, I don't know if this is going to work out well. It could be that it's a, a terrible idea, but, you know, I'm, I'm going to give it a try. So we'll see how it goes. So what I want to do is I want valid dollars to render. I want it to render to a label, uh, to a swing label. Um, so if I have a valid dollars, then what I want is I want to be able to pass in a label. Um, and the reason I want to pass in a label is because that's how these default cell, this default cell, table cell renderer works. It's actually a label. So I want to pass the renderer into valid dollars, have it do this logic, and then um, and then be done. And what that will do is the polymorphism that I have between valid dollars and invalid dollars will allow me to automatically do the right thing in a place that's next to the other, you know, next to related code. Um, basically, I want to keep my invalid dollar logic in invalid dollars, so the displaying an icon. I want to keep my valid dollar logic in valid dollars. And that's why I'm doing this 
is so that I can take advantage of the polymorphism I already have set up. If I wasn't using polymorphism, if I didn't have an invalid dollars class and a valid dollars class, I'd have an if statement everywhere. If dollars dot is valid, um, render it one way. If dollars dot is valid, do this thing. And that code would be spread out throughout all the code. It'd be really ugly. Um, so that's the value of polymorphism. And I want to take advantage of that in my rendering, not just in my logic. And that's why I'm doing this. I don't know if I'm speaking very clearly, but, you know, hopefully it will become clear as I do it. And if not, well, you can always leave angry messages on my website. Uh, or not so angry. But your comments are welcome. So uh, let's see. What I want to do is I want to say value to render um, to a label. So and that's not implemented yet. So let's go ahead and create it. that of course oh let's let's not do it here just yet that's that's gonna cascade in a way I don't want to I'll just have this be a valid dollars and where do I want to put it I'm gonna put it here. Okay. So far, so good. It doesn't do anything. Then what I want to do is I want to assert that the text has been set to the same value as a string. Actually, let's make that really explicit. All right, so, um, and this should fail. Yeah, expected $20 was blank. So that's what we'll pick up with next time. Thanks very much for watching, everybody. I'll catch you next time.